Diligence. Why is diligence important? Well, if you want a real robot solution, it can't be uh, a very narrow solution that's going to break at the first variation in what the robot does or the environment if it wasn't exactly as you expected it. Mm. So how do you get there? I think uh, having an approach that leaves you unsatisfied until you've embraced the bigger problem is the is the diligence I'm talking about. And uh, again, I'll point at Boss Dynamics. I think they've done it. You know, some of the videos that we had showing the engineer making it hard for the robot to do its task. Uh, spot opening a door, and then the guy gets there and pushes on the door so it doesn't open the way it's supposed to, pulling on the on the rope that's attached to the robot so its navigation has been screwed up. Uh, we have one where the robot's climbing stairs and an uh, engineer is tugging on a rope that's pulling it back down the stairs. You know, that's totally different than just the robot seeing the stairs, making a model, putting its feet carefully on each step. But that's what probably robotics needs to succeed. And having that broader that broader idea that you want to come up with a robust solution is what I meant by diligence. So really testing it in all conditions, perturbing the system in all kinds of ways. Right. And as a result, creating some epic videos. <laughs> the the legendary- The fun part, the hockey stick. <laughs> and then yes, tugging on Spot as it's trying to open the door. I mean, the, it's it's great testing, but it's also, I don't know, it's just somehow extremely compelling demonstration of robotics in video form. I learned something very early on with the first three-dimensional hopping machine. If you just show a video of it hopping, it's a so what. If you show it falling over a couple of times and you can see how easily and fast it falls over, then you appreciate what the robot's doing when it's when it's doing its thing. So I think, you know, your the reaction you just gave to the door the robot getting kind of uh, interfered with or tested while it's going through the door, it's showing you the scope of the solution. The the limits of the system, the the challenges involved in failure, if the, showing both failure and success makes you appreciate the, the success. Yeah. And then just the way the videos are done in Boston Dynamics are incredible because they're not, there's no flash, there's no extra like production, it's just raw testing of the robot. Well, you know, I was the final edit for most of the videos up until uh, until about three years ago or four years ago. And, uh, you know, my theory of the video is no no explanation. If they can't see it, then it's not the right thing. And if you do something worth showing, then let them see it. Don't, don't interfere with, uh, you know, a bunch of titles that slow you down or a bunch of distraction. Just, you know, do something worth showing and then show it. That's brilliant. It's it's hard. It's hard though for for people to buy into that. Yeah, I mean, people always want to add more stuff, but the simplicity of just yeah. do something worth showing and show it. That's brilliant, and don't add extra stuff. Yeah, people people have criticized, uh, especially the the big dog videos where there's a human uh, driving the robot, and and I understand the criticism now. At the time, we wanted to just show look. This thing's using its legs to get up the hill, so we focused on showing that, which was, we thought, the the story. Mm -hmm. The fact that there was a human, so they were thinking about autonomy, whereas we were thinking about the the mobility. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we've we've adjusted to a lot of things that we see that people care about. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to be honest, we've always tried to be honest, but also just show cool stuff in its raw form, the limits of the system. The see the system be perturbed and be robust and resilient and all that kind of stuff, and uh, and dancing with some music, uh, intrepidness and fun. So in, intrepid. I mean, it might be the most important ingredient, and sure. that is, you know, robotics is hard. It's not going to work right right away. So don't be discouraged. Is all, all it really needs. Mm -hmm. So usually, when I talk about these things, I show videos and I show. A long string of outtakes, you know, and you know you have to have uh, courage to be to be intrepid when you know you work so hard, you built your machine, you know, and then you're trying and it just doesn't do what you thought it would do, what you want it to do, and uh, you know you have to stick to it and keep trying. How long? I mean, 
we don't often see that the story behind Spot and Atlas. How long? How many failures was there along the way to get you know a working Atlas, a working Spot in the early days, even working Big Dog? There's a video of Atlas climbing three big steps, and it's very dynamic, and it's you know it's really exciting, real accomplishment. It took uh, 109 tries, and we have video of every one of them. You know, we shoot mm -hmm. everything. Again, we this is at Boston Dynamics. Um, uh, so it took 109 tries. But once it did it, it had a high percentage of success. So mm -hmm. it's not like we're cheating by just showing the best one, but we do show the evolved you know, performance, not everything along the way. But the, everything along the way is informative, and you know, it shows sort of... Uh, there's, you know, stupid things that go wrong, like mm -hmm. like the robot just when you say go and it collapses right there on the mm -hmm. start. That doesn't have to do with the steps. Uh, or the perception didn't work right, so you miss the target when you jump, or something breaks and there's oil flying everywhere. Uh, but that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> so the hardware failures and, and maybe some software. Lots stuff. of control of evolution during that time. I think it took six weeks to get that those uh, 109 trials. You know, because there was there was uh, programming going on. You know, it was it was actually robot learning, but there were human in the loop helping with the learning. So all data driven. But uh, okay, and so and you always are learning from that failure. So right. And <laughs> how do you how do you protect Atlas from not getting damaged from one hundred nine uh, attempts? It was. Re it's remarkable. One of the accomplishments of Atlas is that the engineers have made a machine that's robust enough that it can take that kind of testing where it's falling and stuff, and it doesn't break every time. It still breaks, and we had, you know, part of the the paradigm is to have people to repair stuff. You got to figure that in if you're going to do this kind of work. Um, you know, I, I sometimes criticize the people who have their gold plated thing and they keep it on the shelf and everybody and they're afraid to kind of use it. I don't think you can make progress if you're working that way. You know, you need to be ready to have it break and and go in there and fix it. It's part of the thing. You know, plan your budget so you have <laughs> spare parts and a crew and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, if it falls 109 times, it's okay. Wow. Um, so intrepid, truly. And that applies to spot, that applies to all the other applies robots. to everything. I think it applies to everything anybody tries to do that's worth doing. Yeah. <laughs> And especially with systems in the real world, right? 